How are you guys? So, <clears throat> today was another meditation practice. It is a continuation on the meditation of visualization and imagery. Uh, today I brought a glass cup to fill water in. I feel this was a little bit better than the paper cup. And as I mentioned before, I usually will start anywhere from one minute to five minutes of visualization and imagery practice first by observing the object in front of me and to look at all the attributes and dimensions and everything about it in this case is water in a glass cup and <clears throat> this is a practice that can be very challenging because once I finish that process, then I'll close my eyes and then I will try to create the exact visualization and image in my mind's eye. And this is not with the green and purple hues you might see when it's dark or, you know, when you're outside where there's light, you might have like kind of like hues of red and white. The objective is to make this as clear as if I was looking at it with my real eyes. So this is a practice. Now, when doing this meditation, people will ask me, like, is it supposed to be about like thinking of nothing or just thinking about water or this, that, and the other? I guess I'll just explain the process. So in this case, I might be outside and I'm feeling the air and the wind touch my skin. I might hear birds chirping. I might hear the sounds of cars moving past. Part of the meditation, again, this is just my practice and part of what I practice based off of the principles and foundations of what I study for me is impermanence and detachment. So, when I hear the sounds and when I feel the sensations, I acknowledge them. They exist. They have manifested and they have touched on my sense organs. So it's not like I'm trying to avoid them or block them or get upset with them and have ill will towards them. No, in fact, I am grateful that I can sense these things because that means I'm still alive and that also means that my body is functioning very well. So the body that I reside in, I'm very grateful that it can hear, it can feel, it can see. So I'm acknowledging that all these things exist. And But just like the whole thing about detachment, once I acknowledge it, then it passes and I let it be and I just kind of go right back to trying to focus on the object in my sights and then if I close my eyes the, I'm trying to visualize the object in my mind's eye. So hopefully this gives people understanding that it's not about like avoiding or fighting or blocking it's about acceptance, then letting go through detachment. And then after that, it just also teaches a little bit about impermanence. Because all this is a temporary state. What I'm doing is a temporary state. What I'm focusing on is a temporary state. The sounds and sensations I'm feeling is a temporary state. They come and go. They arise, they fall. They, there's a birth and there's a passing. And then I go back to the moment, and then I keep concentrating on and focusing on the glass and the water, and then trying to create the image of water in my mind. And when it comes to this type of focus, this concentration, I'm doing it with a correct and calculated lens. Meaning I'm not trying to strain myself and tense myself as if I'm a laser that's trying to burrow a hole through the object that I was observing. No. It's like 
if it's a little blurry, I put on my glasses. The glasses helps me to focus, and now the image is sharp and clear. But it's not like I have to strain my eyes or tense my body for my glasses to make the image sharper. Or if I put on contact lenses, or if I use a magnifying glass. Everything is just about appropriate amount of effort where it becomes natural, where you're not straining anymore. So that's part of the practice as well. And for right now, I can only speak about my own personal experience as I practice this imagery and visualization meditation and as I continue to use water as the element of choice. I am not thinking or contemplating or understanding water as an element as the scientific table. You have to remember these concepts were back in the ancient times in the BC era. And these were talking about more of the properties and principles and characteristics of the element in the sense that what is water? Water has the ability to flow, right? It just moves accordingly. It has the ability to cause cohesiveness. Like if you think about mixing things together and how water brings things together. A good example of this, uh, I'll use soups for example. You think about all the different types of soups that we can make from one country, one ethnicity, one nation to another. Well, think about water as actually the, or the fluids as the primary way to create a cohesion of bring everything together, right? So there you go. Water can be a very cohesive state, a binding state, and in my opinion, water is a very connective state because we all, as human beings and all species in this world, on this planet Earth, need water to survive. Uh, humans are mostly water, over 70%. And without enough water for each human being, we'll suffer and we can pass away and the ability to give water, to clean water to others is to give life and to show kindness and caring and understanding and empathy. So there's a lot of interesting thoughts and feelings that arise with water. And it's amazing if you think about water's ability to clean, right? Because the thing is that if you have dirt, feces, urine, pollutants or anything, well, water is the substance and element that's used to clean things, to cleanse things, and water doesn't have a biased or unbiased, uh, unpleasant or pleasant attachment or detachment to cleaning anything, it just, it does what it does, it's unbiased, it's neutral, it just goes about things, right, so there's a lot about meditating about water and the calming properties of it. And just like how it flows and connects to everything, it it can be considered low attention, right? In the sense that you don't really focus on water. Water just kind of is just there, but it at the same time could be the most powerful element because it can move uh, boulders, it can erode mountains, it can take out and calm and and deceased fires, right? So it's. it's it's an incredible element, very passive in nature. It just flows with things, but at the same time, it can create tremendous power and force when necessary to calm things, to equal things, to take things out. And it has a cohesiveness and a, a way of binding things together. And again, in this meditation, sometimes that will happen to me, right? I start to just become this understanding of the characteristics, properties, and nature of water. And then other times I go back to just simply trying to take all my mind and my body into such a calm state that it's just water. Nothing more, nothing less. No past, no future. Just present moment. Breathing in, breathing out. And it's amazing that how much it calms my mind and just brings me tranquility and peace and a sense of oneness at that moment in time. Not a sense of nothingness. I'm not completely void of thought, feeling, sensations, but I'm just more focused and I'm not being assaulted and bombarded by the normal mind that is always running, always thinking, feeling, gauging, judging. 
remorsing, regretting, you know, that, that mind, you know, can assault us every second of our existence. And these exercises are designed to help me to exercise in a way to calm the mind, which is the calmer body, and then decrease stress, and then have better gratitude and appreciation for things. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that narration. It's again just me expressing my thoughts and my summary of my exercise on meditation when it comes to visualization and imagery of water. And this is again is something that I will continue to work on, continue to practice. It's just like my powerlifting. I did not get good at powerlifting because I thought of it or I read a book on it. I had to manifest it with actual work and tactile effort to ex and then gain experience. And then through that experience, I had to generate refinement and then continue to refine it with better education, better knowledge to stop doing things that were inefficient and to, to continue to do things that were more aware, more efficient, more constructive to better improve my journey in the world of powerlifting when it came to bench press squat and deadlift so in this case now i'm doing the same thing for my mind exercises when it comes to meditation okay you guys well i'll be doing more of these examples and just showcasing people what i'm doing and i hope that this will bring something constructive something that is helpful for anyone who is struggling and the thing what I love about meditation is that you do not need to be religious. You do not need to be a scientific mind. You do not need to be any type of person to start meditating. All you have to do is have the curiosity to seek out the appropriate education from individuals who have practiced it and have the correct merits to properly guide you so that you can get the most out of it. Okay, you guys, well, take care. Until next time.